Hello, welcome back to Let's Build and welcome to a very exciting new series. It's a short one, but we're going to be tackling the Disney Castle. Now I know a lot of you are thinking right now, what is the Disney Castle exactly? Is he talking about a castle from a specific movie, a Disney movie that I haven't seen? Well, if you've seen any Disney movie, I'm going to be building the castle that plays at the start. You know, with the shooting star that sweeps across and the fireworks that go off behind it. I'm going to be building that very castle. Now, a bit of trivia, that castle is based on, I think, Cinderella's castle, which is like one of the very first animated movies Disney did. So I'm going to be trying to build that. Now, out behind the village that I built before, I've set up this huge flat area. Now, I used World Edit to make this an artificial square. Yeah, I didn't get lucky. I didn't just find a massive clear space out in the middle of nowhere. I had to pre-prepare this. And I did that with World Edit. I just created a big column of air and then smoothed it off, made the surface grass and trimmed up the edges. But even this isn't quite big enough for the castle that we plan to build. So what I need to do is I need to come back with World Edit and add even more room to build our Disney castle. Now it's funny, this world is a world that was copied over from back when I played survival multiplayer years and years ago. So that castle you saw us just destroy, that's something that I built with my friends years and years ago. And it's really cool to kind of go back in time and remember those events and those buildings that we created. So the first thing I did was I dragged a big square, turned it into air. And now it was time to come around to the edge of the selection that I'd made and trim up the edges. So I'm using a dirt brush here, making spheres of dirt around the edge along the border with the water. And then I'm using a brush that's set to air to create holes in the cliffs here. And then a smooth brush to smooth off any of the sheer, sharp, straight surfaces that are left over after I've tidied up and deleted some of the excess dirt and stone. Now it's still going to be very obvious that this is a man-made square. And like with any terraforming, all you really want to do is create a space to build in. You can come back after you're done and start making it look all natural and, uh, and, uh, and like a real living world and not something that a person, a human being, has created. So again, just using the smooth tool, a brush set to spheres of air and a brush set to spheres of dirt, and just creating these little man-made hills and regions and areas. And as the camera sweeps around, you can see this area just got a whole lot bigger and tidier. We also made all of the biome planes and it might take a while for that to come into effect, but you can see the grass is kind of slightly different colored. And this is where we're going to be building our Disney castle. Now it's a big build, and when I built this, I went all the way to the roof of the world. I hit the height limit for how big we can make buildings. That's how tall our Disney castle is going to be. But we've created definitely plenty of space out here for us to put down the walls, the main building, and there's enough room upwards for us to create all the spires. Now the first thing I do when I'm building anything big like this is I get out some wool of different colors and I map out on the ground a rough idea of where I want the buildings to be. And this is a great way of getting around the idea of scale. If you can see how big you want something to be and you can put down a template of it on the ground, you can hover above like we're doing right now and see exactly how it fits together with the other parts of the building. So the blue square at the middle is the very central tower, the central square tower of the Disney castle. The two yellow cylinders, the two yellow circles, they are the two main towers of the Disney castle. And the one on the right reaches right up into the sky. It's the highest point in the whole of the castle. And so the rest of the wall that's going around are just the incidental towers and structures and buildings that are attached to the castle around the sides. And now as we sweep by, you can see we've changed texture pack because I'm going back to the same texture pack I used to create Frozen's Arendelle because I like 
the nether brick blue effect, and some of the stone brick effects. So now that the wall's in place and we have a template for how we're going to build this, it was time to come back and replace that wall with our favourite material, stone brick. Nothing sets up a castle like stone brick, nothing says medieval and fantasy like a good texture of stone brick. It's not the easiest thing to make in survival multiplayer, just gathering all of that cobblestone and then smelting it down into stone takes ages. But luckily we're in creative and so we can zip along and place it down as quickly as we like. Now I'm using yellow wool up the side of the main tower just to measure the height. But the main tower is something we're going to come back to and rebuild later because I wasn't quite happy with the proportions we have here. Honestly, it's not even large enough. But still, for the sake of making placeholder towers just to see where the walls are going to go, I built the main two towers. Now, these four towers and walls around the edge aren't the edge of the castle. These aren't the outer walls. These are the inner walls. So there's another layer of towers and walls that are going to be put down outside of this building area. But I put down the template and the framework and the foundations and once everything looked right, I came around to this tower and I started to toy around with sandstone and sandstone steps, trying to get a nice design and motif. And this is arguably the hardest part of the build, getting a motif and theme that you're happy with because it's, it's the same materials that you're going to have to loop around the rest of the whole build. Whatever you start building with, you're going to have to continue to build with, otherwise it's going to look out of place and like it doesn't quite fit. Now when you look at the Disney castle, it looks like a very bricky structure. Stone brick suits that perfectly, but it's also set off on the corners and the edges, almost gilded by a golden white kind of block. And the only thing that's close to that is sandstone. So that's what I'm going to be using mostly to set off the edges of my build, is sandstone and sandstone stairs, but also etched sandstone, which kind of, in this texture pack, looks like etched stone brick. It has a pillar effect that works really well. Now I'm using nether brick and nether brick steps here. I know you're probably looking at those blue rooftops thinking, what block is that? I've never seen anything like that in Minecraft. And that's because I came back and edited this texture pack to make sure nether brick isn't red, instead it's blue. And it's going to be my go-to brick and material to use to make the rooftops. In fact, pretty much the only colour in this build is blue, apart from the grey and the gold of the bricks. Now the inner wall wasn't quite high enough, so I came around here as you can see, and I cut it all, moved it up about 8 or 9 blocks, and then pasted it, just to give myself even more height on the inside of the build. I didn't really notice how short it was until I started to consider that I'd have to build even more walls and towers outside of the main castle. And here as we paste in the last section of the inner wall, we're pretty much done with phase one of let's build a Disney castle. Looking pretty good. And as you can see, I'm glad we expanded the space that we had to work with because this is turning into a really massive build. It's always best to give yourself more space than you think you'll need, just in case you do accidentally go over because scale can be a really tricky thing to wrap your head around. Now the Disney castle, it's in a curious place. When you look at it in movies and the intros and things, it's got a giant river that runs right the way through the middle. It's really odd. So I created this massive kind of canal entrance at the front of the castle. This is going to be the front. And that big road in the middle that you see there, we're going to have to dig that out and fill it with water. And that's going to be the river that runs straight through the middle of the castle. And what we're doing now is putting down the towers and walls on the outer edges of the castle. This is going to be the very outermost edge of the castle. And I'm not sure if I built too far out. I think I might have left too much room between the inner walls and the outer walls. But that's something I'll think about changing once I've got all of the inside structures complete. But once I had the templates down for the outer front four towers, I started to build the first tower. 
Now again, with the magic of copy and paste with World Edit, it's so easy to just build one tower and then copy that right over to the other tower that's supposed to look exactly like it. Why build the same thing twice when you can just copy and paste? So again, using the same technique of gilding the edges with sandstone blocks and sandstone steps, I started to build this stone brick tower. Now when you look at the actual building, these things aren't too tall, but they are quite thick and round. And so I'm using etched stone brick here, which in this texture pack takes the form of stone brick pillars. It's a really nice looking block, and I'm really happy with the effect I achieved with it. And now again, stone brick steps are a great way to add texture and depth and detail to an otherwise boring wall. If you have a straight wall and you put upside down stone brick steps and then underneath it, right way up stone brick steps, you instantly create a little dent inside the wall without changing the thickness of the wall itself. So again, a layer of that nether brick steps and nether brick block, the blue effect for the halfway roof on this tower. I'm not really sure what the right name is for it, perhaps canopy. And then again, building up even further with more stone bricks, adding these upside down stone brick steps as decoration. And I've also used stone slabs to add even more differentiation into the walls of this castle tower. And now again, with the tower complete, it's time to build the peaked roof. Now, peaked roofs are always something that can be tricky to build because it doesn't it because it all depends on what you want to achieve from it. Some peaked roofs have curved effects where they start very shallow, but then they get very steep and spike up really high. But others are just straight up pyramids and others are just flat completely on the top. You really need to know what you're trying to go for and what you're trying to achieve when you create these peaked roofs. But as you can see, I've created a design I'm happy with here on the right, and I've even added a flag and some glowstone, and then I literally copied that and pasted it over to the tower on the left. And now again, it was time to come to the tower on the right and do exactly the same as we did with the other two towers. And by that, I mean create the tower on the right and then literally copy exactly what we do here and paste it over the other side because that's going to be another identical tower. Now, I've mentioned it before, but another cool trick when you're building something like a tower, if it's going to be the same all the way around, what you can do is just build one corner, copy it, rotate it four times, and then paste it down. And then you create one wedge of the circle and repeat that pattern around four times and you have a perfectly symmetrical tower. Because even if you plan out your tower perfectly, it's very easy to come around to the other side and just put one block down wrong. And all it takes is one block placed incorrectly. And if your build basis designs on that specific block, you can, you can throw off the whole design of your castle. A whole side of a castle can be incorrect because you got one block wrong. And so to eliminate that problem from the equation, the best thing to do is to copy and paste and rely on the computer to do the repetition for you. So again, I'm using a mix of stone brick, etched stone brick, which looks like pillars, and stone brick steps to create a nice, bumpy, different wall. Now, these corner towers aren't quite as big, I don't think, as the towers in the middle for the main gate. But again, like I said, I'm only doing one corner here, and what I'll be doing is copy and pasting that four times to mimic the design across the whole tower. And again, these rooftops are very peaked. Now, it wasn't quite high enough because these do reach higher than the main towers in the middle. So I copied it, cut it, and then lifted it up just a little bit, and then added even more length to this outside tower. Now here on the outside tower, instead of using sandstone and uh, sandstone steps to add the gilding and detail, I've used wood. Just because it's a little bit more subtle, you can see at a distance that it's a different type of block, but it doesn't stand out, it doesn't glow like sandstone tends to. And again, like I said, once I'd had the design here with the extra nether brick there in the middle, just for a bit of a splash of color, once I had that design in place, I copy and pasted, and then I copied it around 
four times to create a perfectly symmetrical tower. Just a few bits of trimming here and there on the rooftops and the like. And of course, it was time to copy that tower over to the left. And that is where we're going to end today's episode of Let's Build a Disney Castle. But already you can see we're making some serious progress. Next episode, we're going to get even deeper into the build and, uh, and get ever closer to completing this colossal project. But I can't wait to see what you guys think when it's finally complete. Thanks for watching. Hit like and favorite and subscribe if you want to see more. I hope you guys do. And I'll see you next time for some more Let's Build a Disney Castle. Take care.